Chess Diagnostic. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chess Diagnostic. So, I just woke up and played a, it looks like a 40 plus 10 uh, simul that Grandmaster Shaposhnikov was putting on. And I actually won my game. So, you can see here that he played uh, 12 players and he chose quite strong players, a 2500. 2200 most all 2000s I think there was just one 15 or I guess two uh, weaker players and then a 1900 and he beat them all but I was uh, one of the one of his losses and <laughs> this is kind of a, a cocky example I'm not meaning it to be but I got very lucky but it's all because of the basic tactics it's it's kind of uh, the universe here showing you could see that he outplayed me the entire game. Uh, if you look here, I was black, and this is the white graph, so it's just a slow um, increase in his advantage until he's totally winning, and then he blunders a basic tactic, and I made it him in one move. Now, let's look at the game here. So, he did outplay me completely in my Sicilian con, and this variation with, I guess they call it the Meroxy bind, but it kind of forces black to be passive, and I really need to learn some more aggressive uh, Sicilian lines like the Night Orf and other lines, because playing this line against strong players, they normally always know to play <clears throat> with the C4 variation, trading that knight, and now as you can see, I don't really have any pieces developed, and white just has easy development, and actually, uh, Shaposhnikov played an idea that I'd never seen before, but it's completely crushing, and there's really nothing I could do about it. So I play e5, trying to prevent what I thought was the f4 break, and normally that's what players go for, but I've never played against, as you can see, castling, and then b4. So he's pretty much just going to rush his queenside pawns down and it's a very frustrating uh, situation to be in from my side because I have absolutely no plan. There's pretty much no break with d5 yet and he has that on lockdown and the problem um, with the d5 break is that I'll end up the worst for wear because I'll end up with some weak pawns and he'll just have a completely blasted open queenside. So even the computer was recommending queen to d8, I was thinking about that. Um, I played rook from f to b8, which actually is the computer's best choice, uh, hitting that b4 pawn. But even queen to d8, you can see the computer has no plan either, it's just moving back and no plan, completely passive, just trying to hang on. And that's exactly what happened and you don't want to end up with a a pawn on the seventh rank against a grandmaster. So I should have lost this game, but I got lucky because of a one move tactic. We'll, we'll see that in the end. So let's keep going here. So actually me uh, moving this rook back was a mistake. I was meaning to play queen to d8 and then bring the knight over. Um, so I accidentally, um, I guess I had already selected the rook and then clicked d8 and then I saw that. So that was a little frustrating. Um, I'm not sure, I'm sh I'm pretty sure that uh, the game would have gone the same way if I would have played queen to d8. As you can see, a4, uh, knight to d7. And <laughs> they're even saying that uh, white has knight to d5. So even though it's a plus, only a plus uh, 0.3 advantage for white, this position is pretty crushing, um, and he follows this plan of a5 and is just dominating the b6 square. So I'm really going to have to reevaluate my openings after playing this game because um, I did lose in the con in the World Open, and it's just really not servicing me at above 2,000 level. Um, it's very solid, of course. There's nothing wrong with it, but if white knows what they're doing then I can end up completely passive and have no options 
So I can see this. I mean, this is why you don't really see the con too much at high levels. It must be because this idea of just playing on the queen side, establishing establishing a solid center, um, prevents all counterplay from me. Of course, if they're playing normally, what I'll face or what I used to face was something like f four and then trading, and then I would play on the queen side and then in the center. But this idea is much stronger, in my opinion. All right, so I ended up with the rook back, and now I had to find a way. Uh, <laughs> my pieces are completely inactive, and he's going to play a5. Of course, I can't play a5 myself, because then he'll just rush his pawns down. All right, so d5 could have worked here, but let's see the line. So I didn't play this line, but... This still looks pretty dangerous for black. Although that probably would have been more active and better than what I played. So I ended up playing the rook back. All right, so now I had to try to control the b6 square. I didn't want to trade, and he just decided to bring his knight anyway, giving himself a pass pawn, which was the correct decision. He has an almost winning advantage here. So I was trying to free myself. Now my rook's active and I really had to calculate here. So I wanted to bring this knight in here, but um, I didn't want to take. I was thinking about pushing, but of course I didn't want him to have a completely protected pass pawn. So I just kind of maintain the tension, which is an important point playing against strong players that I really need to hone in on as well. Um, maintaining the tension what it does is it gives your opponent the opportunity to make a mistake. Whereas if you just clarify things, then even though you might be losing or it might be equal, if you just clarify things, it makes your opponent's um, situation a lot easier. So I just kind of played a waiting move as well as a threat to take. So he made another basic threat. I threatened his queen again. So he brought his rook up and then I traded. And now at this point he's going to be pushing his past pawn. And there's really nothing I could do about that. But at least I can kind of break his pawn structure after knight to d7. So at this point I knew I was going to have some difficulty with that past pawn. But I still felt that I was in the game somewhat. I could fight back. All right, so with c5, I'm threatening the b6 pawn, but now he starts playing very accurately. Queen to c6, protecting the pawn with his rook. Okay, so I, I was thinking about taking here, but of course that's a tactical mistake. Again, he's playing very accurately, queen to queen to a8. <laughs> uh, the only option the computer says is rook to b8 giving away my queen, but that's completely lost, so I didn't fall into that trap. Um, I came up with this idea of bringing my king over. Now that's not what the computer recommends. It's saying f6, um, and then just trying to wait it out, but I wanted to play actively and use my king as a piece. It was a little dangerous, uh, but, okay, so let's see here. I didn't want to play king to e8 because there's some tactical tricks here. So I tried to uh, keep my king on the dark squares. And so I'm pretty much one move too late after he brings the bishop in. His queen is totally inactive though, and that's his main problem. Uh, but he's managed to secure his passed pawn on b7. But after he moves his rook in and I move the pawn forward, I kind of had some tricky ideas with the queen taking this pawn if he let me. And then if he checked, I would bring the bishop up, um, which is what happened. And I didn't think he'd actually fall for that. But Okay, so his main issue is this queen is completely inactive, 
but he does have some threats on b6 but i do have a pass pawn and i managed to take this pawn all right so after king to d6 i'm actually totally lost um, he should have played bishop to f5 because of course i can't take with the knight he'd take my rook with a check Although these moves are quite hard to find, though. So with rook to d1, now he's threatening a skewer of my king and rook. But what happened here was, so after he checked me on b6, I moved my king to d6. And then I interposed with the bishop, which is the only move. And now it's saying it's dead equal here because he has to actually play f3. It's pretty much the only move because now I'm threatening mate in one. And this is where it comes back to those basic tactics. So what he must have seen was that I interposed and now he could resume his attack on this knight, undermining that knight. But he didn't pay attention to the basic tactic. He played bishop to b5 and then I just checkmated him. So a very lucky win against Grandmaster Shaposhnikov and some interesting ideas for the opening and basic tactics. Alright, if you have any questions or comments on this game, just leave it below and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.